On the 28th of December, 1879, a North British Railway passenger train approached the Tay Rail Bridge, a narrow iron bridge that spanned the River Tay in Scotland. Strong winds howled around the locomotive as it headed out across the water. A signalman stationed on the south side of the bridge watched it go, then turned away to complete some paperwork. By the time he looked back towards the river once more, the train, and a large part of the bridge itself, had completely disappeared. Throughout the 1800s, railways were vital to the economy of the United Kingdom. As the century progressed, more and more routes were constructed until the country was crisscrossed by train tracks. By the 1870s, hundreds of different companies ran services on more than 21,000 kilometers or 13,000 miles of track. Trains not only allowed people to travel quickly and with relative ease, but also boosted the economy by allowing the rapid transit of goods and equipment. Two prominent rail companies of the time were the North British Railway and the Caledonian Railway, both based in Scotland. Competition between the two was fierce, with one particular point of contention being which would be first to bridge the River Tay near Dundee. A bridge in this vital area would give the railway which owned it a distinct commercial advantage over the other. In the end, it was North British Railway that got there first. They commissioned a bridge to be designed by civil engineer Thomas Bouch, a man with plenty of experience designing smaller bridges on other railways. The process of building the bridge itself was by no means an easy one. Not long after construction began in 1871, it emerged that the bedrock beneath the river was much further down than had previously been thought. This necessitated a change in design. Bouch replaced the brick piers in the original plan with wrought iron concrete and brick foundations, on top of which were cast iron columns. These would support a narrow bridge deck, just wide enough for a single train track. For most of the length of the bridge, the deck would run along the top of iron lattice girders. But there would be a section where the girders were elevated and the track ran through them instead. This elevated section would allow taller ships to pass by underneath. On the 31st of May 1878, the finished bridge was opened. It was instantly popular, with both passenger numbers and the amount of freight carried between Dundee and Fife almost doubling in the year that followed. It was a great commercial success for the North British Railway, and for Thomas Bouch too. After Queen Victoria rode across the bridge in 1879, she awarded its designer with a knighthood. Not everyone was so pleased with the new bridge, however. There were some strident complaints about its narrowness. The single-track design meant that it had a relatively low capacity and the physical narrowness of the deck made some users feel that it was unsteady. The provost, or council leader of Dundee, who happened to have a background in engineering, was among those who were convinced the bridge was unstable. He complained to a local station master several times that the train travelled so fast along the elevated section of the bridge that it caused the whole bridge to shake. He noted that this was particularly the case when the train was travelling north, due to a slight downward gradient in this direction. His complaints were passed on, but did not result in any action, and the provost himself took to using a ferry for northbound journeys instead. Painters working on the bridge in the year after its completion also noted that it tended to shake when fast-moving trains passed over it. Despite these reports, the bridge did pass a Board of Trade inspection although this inspection took place during a period of good weather. The inspector imposed a 40 km per hour or 25 mile per hour speed limit and noted that a follow-up should take place during a period of high winds. This follow-up inspection, however, never took place. On the 28th of December 1879, Dundee was hit by a powerful storm with winds that locals described as the strongest they'd experienced in 30 years. At around 7.13pm, a North British Railway passenger train approached the Tay Bridge, coming from Burnt Island and bound for Dundee. On board were approximately 60 to 70 people. 
At the southern end of the bridge, the train slowed down so the driver could pick up a baton from the signalman. This baton was used as a token to ensure that only one train could enter the bridge at a time. Once this had been collected, the train was driven out onto the bridge amidst the howling winds. Multiple witnesses reported seeing either sparks or flashes of light as the train crossed the bridge, although different witnesses gave different reports on how long these lasted and where they emanated from. Some insisted that sparks flew from the wheels of the train, while others reported seeing flashes emanating from the girders of the bridge itself. Other witnesses variously reported seeing a massive fireball tumbling into the water, a girder falling from the bridge, and huge sprays of water as something landed in the Firth of Tay. In the moment, few witnesses were certain what exactly they had seen. What they had seen was the collapse of a large portion of the bridge. The entire span of elevated girders had detached and fallen down into the water, taking the train with it. Every single person who had been on board had died in the moments after the collapse, either as a result of the impact as the train hit the water, or from drowning as the carriages sunk beneath the surface. On shore in Dundee, residents suspected something was amiss but weren't yet certain. With night fallen and the storm still raging, no boats could cross the river and the telegraph cable that ran along the bridge had been severed by the collapse. With no other means of communication to help them understand the situation, two railway employees ventured out onto the bridge on foot, proceeding far enough to view the collapsed section for themselves. Despite the storm, boats were sent out, carrying with them local doctors and a supply of brandy to revive anyone pulled from the water they found only the twisted remains of the iron girders that had once been part of the Tay Bridge. By the next morning, with daylight illuminating the ruined bridge and wreckage washing ashore along the Firth of Tay, any hope of finding survivors was lost. In total, at least 59 people died in the collapse of the Tay Bridge, although some estimates based on ticket sales put the death toll as high as 75. Over the next few weeks, most of the train was recovered and an investigation was launched. There were several theories about what had caused the collapse. One theory was that the bridge simply had not been strong enough to withstand the exceptional winds of the storm that hit Dundee that night. Others put forward the theory that the sparks some witnesses had seen were a result of the train partially derailing. A train not running entirely within the rails might have collided with the raised girders, precipitating the collapse. The inquiry highlighted a number of other factors that might have contributed to the failure of the bridge, including the use of poor quality iron, a lack of proper maintenance, failing ties, and the use of bolts that were thinner than they should have been. The most direct cause of the disaster is still debated to this day but the inquiry summarised its findings by asserting that the bridge was badly constructed and badly maintained, with most of the failings being the responsibility of the engineer who designed it, Thomas Bouch. The finding was a difficult one for Bouch, whose health declined rapidly in the months following the inquiry. He died on the 30th of October 1880, less than one year after the accident and was buried in Dean Cemetery in Edinburgh. At the time of his death, he had been working on a design for a new railway bridge across the Forth River, but a lack of confidence in his ability led to his design being abandoned. An iconic cantilever design by English engineers Sir John Fowler and Sir Benjamin Baker was used instead. A replacement for the fallen bridge across the Tay was constructed and opened without ceremony within five years of the disaster. It made use of some of the iron girders from the original bridge, which was demolished, leaving behind only the feet of some support columns, which remain visible alongside the new bridge to this day. The design of the new bridge addressed all of the defects that might have contributed to the collapse of the original structure. It could withstand much higher winds and was broader and more stable 
with appropriate bolts and ties, and a more stringent inspection and maintenance schedule. The disaster was also commemorated in poetry by several writers at the time, including one William McGonagall, whose poem about the collapse of the Tay Bridge has been recognised as the worst poem ever written. Despite its infamy, this poem has helped to keep the memory of the disaster alive for more than a hundred years. In 2013, two identical memorials were put in place on either side of the Tay, each of them listing the 59 names of those who were known to have died in the collapse of the first, flawed, Tay Railway Bridge. <laughs>